Um, a GIST program manager, a Mozilla Foundation representative, and a Wikipedian go into a bar, and the barman says, there's a lot of informal learning going on in online open learning communities. How do we capture that? And kind of say, uh, well, captured by whom? For what purpose? And the barman says, well, it's basically a complex question that merits discussion from many different points of view. That's what this is. We're really lucky to, to have this panel, um, uh, including two representatives from organisations outside Wikimedia, but who are great friends to Wikimedia. First, I'll introduce Doug Belshaw from the Mozilla Foundation. The Mozilla Foundation do lots of work with us. Um, uh, thanks for using your room for the events. And, not your room, your the Mozilla Foundation's uh, space for events. Um, uh, if you've used Wikipedia, you've got something from Wikimedia for free. If you've used Firefox, you've got something from the Mozilla Foundation for free. Um, Doug has, uh, this year, submitted his doctoral thesis on digital literacy. Classic views, but Absolutely, yes. Right? Yep, yep. And as an example of the wiki way of working in, uh, uh, you can now get it online. It was submitted but not completed. You don't require it to complete it. No. So you can get it online at neverendingthesis.com. <laughs> it's in media wiki, the software platform that really runs on and anyone can take and make any sign with uh, once that's signed. I thought all theses were never, never ending. Anyone who's ever done a thesis has thought of a never ending thesis. It's amazing. Um, Lonnie Phipps, you've got lots of answers. So your program manager in the user innovation uh, in yeah. user and in, in innovation team. Uh, it's not on Wikipedia. He's confused now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Co-chair of Cedar. Not anymore. Oh, you're one of your online volunteers, says you. Or you were, and you're the founder of TechDisc that we heard from yesterday. About one of the founders of TechDisc. Yeah. Uh, National Advisory Service for Accessibility. Um, uh, yeah, and well, you'll know the sort of plan view person about digital and open education. You've got another influential blog about those things that they mean to education in the future. You love, but yeah, you do. Yeah. Lee was a keynote speaker yesterday and was so massively popular, we've got to have her back. <laughs> but we're talking about, I'm basically going to throw some questions about uh, assessment on. Wikihub environments to the wiki demics in the room. Um, can I ask Doug to start us off with yeah. the, the Cool, right, so, um, it's probably going to be here where the microphone is. I don't really want to go through slides, um, because this is the final discussion, but I just wanted to show some stuff. So, um, two things. First of all, if you've heard of Mozilla, you just raise your hand quickly, just uh, to see you awake. Good. Um, keep it up if, you, if you've used Firefox, and then keep it up if you've heard of Open Badges. Excellent, lots of people have heard of Open Badges. I'm just going to very quickly explain to those people who um, might not have heard or might think they know what they are and perhaps don't. Um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to use the flip chart, so hopefully we'll be in. So basically, um, there's lots of different things that you need to show that you know in life. So the first thing, I used to work for Jisk Infinite until a couple months ago, and the first thing that I had to do when I joined Jisk Infinite was buy Northumber University Fire Safety Training. So I've still got that certificate somewhere, and I've got 89%, I'm very proud of that fact. So I've got my fire safety certificate, which I'm going to draw somewhere. I've also got my doctorate, okay, not quite on the same scale in terms of effort and um, kind of recognition, but I've got my doctorate there somewhere as well. I've also Prince 2 um, qualified, so I've got that there somewhere as well. And these don't talk to each other at all. Um, in fact, the only relation to each other is the fact that they sit on top of each other at a drawer on the bottom of my desk. Yeah? So that's the only relation they've got between each other. So we need to connect these together somehow to show what we know. So we can do that. We can totally do that. Like I can write a blog post about that. I can put it on my website. I can say all these different types of things. I can put it on a CV. But there's no way that um, someone can come along and check that unless they come around to my house or I take those certificates physically around them or they check some kind of database something like that. So the idea with open badges is that you have a, a, a digital badge um, and you put some metadata into the badge. So this is like a PNG or an SVG file. And the metadata, data above data, um, contains some information, for example, um, who issued the badge, what it was issued for, that criteria, what, what, what that was for, but also the evidence for it, so what this person had to do. So when you click on it, it comes up with the evidence URL and you can see what this person actually did. 
So for example, I totally scraped by my Prince 2 qualification. I got like 51%. But no one would ever know that because I've got my Prince 2 qualification. Whereas that kind of more granular kind of stuff, you can do without convergence, because someone could click on it, see perhaps, I don't think Prince 2 could do this, but other kind of rewards. You could see what kind of things I did and see that I wasn't like 100% achieved on Prince 2. So I wasn't actually that interested in doing it. But um, you can see exactly what happens. So I've got a kind of a homely example for us. So Tom, who doesn't seem to be here and is supposed to have this slot now, um, he has got a Wikipedia page according to the um, Edgy Wiki program, which looks a lot like this. So I was just looking at this just literally um, before. And he's got these things called barn stars. Now, barn stars, as far as I can tell, are things that you get on Wikipedia if you do some cool, useful stuff for people, yeah? But these pretty much reside within the Wikipedia community. Um, as, again, as far as I can understand, like they have reference and understanding for people in the Wikipedia community. But there's no way, really, it's quite hard to explain these, I should imagine, to people outside the community. Um, and if you click on them, nothing happens. If you right-click on them, you can copy and paste them. So the metadata involved in open badges, I can't just copy, I can't copy and paste, you know, Laurie's badge for photography, for example, because his email address will be hard-coded into the badge. It just wouldn't work with my badge backpack. And a badge backpack looks um, something a little bit, not like that. <laughs> a bit like that, yeah? So I have my different badges for different things, um, and if this was kind of a live demo, I've learned from experience I don't do live demos. Um, if it was a live demo, I'd be able to click on it and you'd be able to see the kind of metadata encoded in the badges and you'd be able to click through and see what I had to do for each of those badges. So I can't just copy and paste them, but, but it would mean that, for example, I could take these and um, LinkedIn and, and Tumblr and people like that are coming on board with the kind of Mozilla open badge infrastructure next year. You'd be able to put those on different profiles and different websites and people would be able to see, would be able to make explicit what is only implicit in the Wikipedia community, the kind of things that you've done within that community and, and kind of surface those for other people. So that's the idea. Um, there's lots of people doing some interesting stuff on, on this. Um, the MacArthur Foundation in the US is funding something called the DML competition, which is the dmlcompetition.net. Um, and so there's people like NASA. If you go to the NASA website, you know the Mars Curiosity rover, you can get an open badge for learning about that. Um, uh, Disney are doing some stuff, um, the Bedman Society, Intel, um, lots of big people doing some interesting stuff, but also you can just use um, badges for anything that you want to credential, anything you want to show, um, anything you want to recognize. And, and to my mind, the reason why I left Just Infinite and the reason why I joined Mozilla was because I recognized as a form teacher how much assessment drives everything that we do in education, whether we like it or not. So it's a way of, of capturing that information that you don't usually capture. Because I would hope that I'm not just a sum total of my degrees and the jobs that I've done. I would like to hope that I'm more than that. I'm always probably sharing these head at this point. <laughs> but I'm, I think I'm more than that, right? I think that I actually have a life outside of those things. So badges hopefully help capture that more holistic picture of the learner. So I'll leave it there. Love it, your chance to hold this one. Do you know what, I'm going to leave them on then. Just leave them on. It's, it's nice to just do um, I think of Doug as being more than the sum total of his badges, by the way. <laughs> just, just to reassure him. Um, and when Martin um, and Andrew actually got in touch with me about this session and about talking about open assessment, um, or assessment and accreditation within an open system, it, that, that sort of ignites me, because actually I'm very excited about education. You know, I, you know, I was sitting around the bar, you know, a bottle of tequila, thanks Lee, um, and I've got a badge for that now. Um, but you know what, when you come to conferences like this, it's like you don't sit in the bar talking about whatever's going on in your personal life. You get very excited about what we do. So I actually love education, and I love listening to all the different things that people are doing. And I'm, you know, like all, you know, when you look around, you see lots of different innovations in assessment. And actually you do realize, and Doug's absolutely right when he says, assessment drives education. Um, what I worry about is that I was at that stage where we saw modularization in uh, higher education, you know, when that first started to come in, and, and we started turning things into chunks. You know, I'm sure there's, looking around the room, a lot of you are old enough to remember that. You know, 
Um, so we started learning in chunks and, and doing little bits of things and recognising those little bits of things. And I remember I did some modules at uh, university. I'm crap at math. Math is dreadful for me. So I, I remember doing a, statist a statistical uh, module at uh, university in the first year and I'm thinking, oh, thank God that's over. I can now forget about that for the rest of my academic career. So the statistics badge was taken away and put in a box. I passed it. Um, I think I got a reasonable mark, but it was put away. And it only ever really came out that learning if I had to do something else within. But they said that you had to have that badge. You could actually get through the rest of my degree. I did environmental science. It's like science without math. Um, so you could actually get away with the rest of my degree. That's going to hurt. Um, um, so you can get away with the rest of my degree without actually doing too many complex mathematics. Um, but I've still got the badge which says that I've actually you know, I've got a statistical badge at that level. And I worry that when we start looking at accrediting lifelong learning in this way, that we will not look at the person anymore. That we'll start looking at, well, Doug has got a Prince 2 badge. That's great. Actually, he's got 51%, so is there a badge for 51% and a badge for 62% and a badge for 75% and things like that? So I, I like the fact that the badge I've got is I've got a degree and my badge is my degree certificate. Um, because I think in higher education, that's how we assess things. We assess somebody's holistic knowledge. We want them to be able to come out as a rounded person and not actually break down the assessment in education. Now, I'm not saying that badges aren't great in other walks of life, but I actually rely on academics. You know, there's some great innovation assessment here. I mean, Alan Khan at the back, I know he's doing some fantastic different things with his students, <laughs> name checked, um, with, with loads of assessment and loads of um, open assessment in terms of what he's getting students to do. But we don't badge them, we give them a, a holistic badge at the end called an education, a degree, and I don't want to break things down. I'm not going to sort of, you know, hog the floor because I know Lee's itching to get up here and... and <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so my perspective on this is, I know that assessment isn't working brilliantly, but I don't think making it even more granular and giving badges for chunks of assessment is the answer to whatever it is that's wrong with assessment at the moment. Can I make a couple of questions towards that? Um, well, my end is psychology, so I know that stereotypes, halo effects, and all that sort of stuff. So if somebody goes to a new environment, like they go to the university to work, yeah. and you say, I'm not interested in the little things specifying the skills you have, you're interested in that. Uh, you know, people will anyway make a holistic judgment about the person. But it's vulnerable to bias. If it's based on how someone looks, or what car seems to have a problem, or an accent, that's going to affect people. Um, that will affect people's holistic judgment. So it's a holistic judgment um, which is based on a little bit of information, like somebody has a degree. And then, so is that necessarily reliable at all, more than a specification of what somebody's achieved? I know one was this micro modularization seems to be happening anyway, and we can argue about whether it's a good thing or not, but it just seems to be happening like uh, people are learning one thing from. Wikiversity and one other related thing from the educator and one other thing at the University of Leicester and then there's got to be something. Yeah, just to, just to be clear, I wouldn't want to um, necessarily, just as um, you can use badges for games, like the application kind of stuff, um, you can use badges to break things down and make things more funny. You don't have to do that, although that's a, a thing which a lot of people tend to do with badges, yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily say that they're symbiotic, but that's just the way that people do put them together quite a lot. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> if education is becoming micro modular anyway, so we don't want them to stick to degrees, but then don't we need some sort of infrastructure? <coughs> well, I, I don't think it is becoming micro modular. I think that, uh, that we're maybe being driven that way by the, the content that is available and the way that people are structuring content. I don't think, and, and actually, I'm not going to sit here and sort of, you know, become some sort of. Um, praising the governments as they are at the moment. But we've just seen um, the, the, the debate around, is it the maths? No, it's English, isn't it? So the, the English GCSEs um, are moving them away from, you can now do it in chunks, we're actually gonna start moving back towards, actually you've gotta pull it all together at the end in an exam. Now I'm not saying that's good or bad, 
And I think that, you know, at that point, maybe GCSEs have gone down to that thing where you can retake this bit and you can do this bit. And, and actually the students were looking at it as, I've done that, move on, forget about it, and things like that. So I think that, um, that the way that we're structuring things and then rewarding them, you know, with a badge maybe, it is actually having a negative effect on education. Oh, if that's someone who's taught GCSE, um, I would suggest that, that that isn't true at all, <laughs> first of all. Um, and, and secondly, I was having a conversation with someone who was talking about their dad, who was a store manager. And he was saying how, he was having a conversation with his dad, and his dad used to always choose people who had like a degree, degree if possible, um, kind of education, um, or certainly some kind of college education. This is a guy at the US conference. Um, and when he challenged his dad and said, why do you, you don't even look at what skills they've got, you just see the fact that they've got a college education. Why is that? Oh, because you have a class of people. And I think that kind of lazy shorthand is prevalent throughout kind of the world, basically. So saying that, oh, well, this person has a 2 one degree or has a first, as some type of badge, for want of a better term, um, for what class of people they are, or some kind of gentrification, or some kind of like being in the in club middle class kind of thing, might be nice and warm and snug and, and homely for the people who are inside that club, but it's, it's certainly not a nice thing for people who are outside that club. And given that I, I live and grew up in a very deprived area and see how much people are locked out of this kind of, um, people say, oh, well, I mean, Terry made this point yesterday, yeah? Oh, well, it's open, therefore it must be accessible. You know, you raise the point in terms of just because something's open to everybody doesn't mean that it's not structured in a way which completely, like, doesn't allow people who have got accessibility issues to actually access that kind of stuff. And you mentioned the gradient for people moving into higher education. You know, they have less and less support. It's the same kind of thing if you come from a disadvantaged background. So I, I wouldn't want to say that, um, just because something's open, just because certain people get a certain type of degree, just because we have things which select people from society to do certain types of things, that those aren't fraught with huge problems and shouldn't be kind of mixed up in some kind of way. But that's not, I'm not saying that about, I'm talking about assessment and accreditation, right. okay? And that's a wider political issue about the democratisation of education. Mm. You know, I'm a WP student. You know, I, I guarantee there's going to be probably half the room of WP students. Maybe but um, the when it comes to what you mean, maybe. I mean, democratisation of education is a huge thing. But how does how do badges fulfil that role of democratising education? Because actually, what people are then doing are competing to get badges. Right. Okay. So what I what I really like about badges is the way that um, and this isn't about you particularly. It's about basically people project their own worldview and and bias and prejudice, me included into basically what is an emergent and open ecosystem. Yeah? So um, in, in, in the world that you see with badges and in the future, which might happen, could happen definitely, people compete. But to some extent, people compete in job markets anyway. People compete for getting into universities. Okay? So the way that I see badges, and certainly I think the way that Mozilla sees badges, isn't to just replace what we've got in higher education, because we've kind of got a system there already. It isn't to replace what we've got in schools. It's to kind of augment all that kind of stuff. Um, and make more holistic the kind of picture of the learner that we get. Because if you've got, I mean, I was talking to a, um, a vet um, who was talking about a dental student, and they were saying that basically, when I'm, when I'm trying to select people to get on this dentistry course, everybody has got four A's at a level. They've all volunteered. You know, they all can play like 17 instruments. So how do I choose between these people? Yeah, we need some kind of thing, either for university entry or some kind of thing to get people jobs and skills and educational opportunities. So it's your who's first, I didn't see him. That way. Go with it. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I've got a few comments here, really, more than a question. Um, and accreditation and assessment is okay. Um, and some people do achieve through that means. But other people don't. Other people, uh, other learners, just get pressurised by it. Um, people learn through their own motivations. Uh, there's two sorts of motivation, extrinsic and intrinsic. Now, the extrinsic motivation is the one where the people go around collecting badges, 
which is great if you can do that, but it's awful if you fail. Um, and you just end up feeling a complete failure because you didn't get your swimming badge, because you didn't get your sunken proficiency badge. Okay, you got your editing Wikipedia in a wardrobe badge, but you know, nothing else. Um, there's intrinsic motivation. And intrinsic motivation is the thing inside you making you want to know about things. So you've got a BMX bike, you want to know how to maintain it, you want to know um, where competitions are, you go and you learn that yourself. Yeah, you might get a BMX badge, but that's not what you're doing it for. It's so that you can be the best BMX cyclist in the world. And it's that sort of learning, it's the important bit of learning, because you get independent thinkers that way, rather than the people who just collect badges just in terms of in, in terms of open and OER Wikipedia, the work that Amber's doing at Hipjisk and, and that sort of thing, I think that is providing a framework, an infrastructure for people to actually develop that wanting to learn. I think that you know that's one of the great things about things that are going on in the open sector now. Open sector. Oh, it's a new term. It's <laughs> so, okay. okay. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Um, so you've got this sort of, this area, and, and because people can sort of just sort of browse and actually move at their own pace without having the pressure of assessment, like you said, they do actually sort of get that intrinsic motivation, I think, if they find something that they're interested in. So I agree with the point you make here about, I think if people went around collecting badges, that thing, just like people going around collecting degrees, mm. you know, shopping around for master's degrees and so forth, it will probably be a bad thing. The way I see badges, um, and Don mentioned and touched upon this one a little bit, the way I see badges actually is as a, a economic leveler, if you will. I think a lot of people don't have the luxury, for whatever reason, cultural capital uh, limitations, financial capital limitations, to get real degrees, if you will, especially in countries where education is increasing, higher education is increasingly very expensive. So the way I see the way I see badges actually that's a leveler in that sense that you can still get some kind of uh, some kind of uh, formal or informal accreditation, I guess, for having done something well and having and, and being approved by someone for doing that well. And you can use that to prove that you have those skills. Um, the second the second point I want to make is I agree with holistic education. Of you and I, and I think that that is in many ways better than cutting down into very modular, granular uh, methods. At the same time, I think at least maybe in the, uh, the college level, the undergraduate level, I feel that the degree that you get actually means nothing. Not in the sense that the degree doesn't do anything in the job market, but you know, I got I have a degree in sociology from UC Berkeley, and so do hundreds and thousands of other people. Like I did research that they didn't do, and they did stuff I didn't do, and I did certain things they didn't do, right? If for an employer or for uh, if for an employer who's looking at all these people with comparable degrees from UC Berkeley, it says absolutely nothing about what the, these people actually know, right? Like my research skills might actually be better than someone else's. There is there's something other skills might be better than mine because they did more of that in school. But all it says on our paper is identical, UC Berkeley, sociology, nothing else. I, I agree. One of the, really, one of the things that, um, that really motivated me yesterday um, was somebody stood up here and they said, I don't have a formal education, I don't have a degree. And that somebody, um, I have great respect for her work, and actually her badge is that she published lots of papers. You know, I didn't talk about it or show you what I've got, I demonstrated what I know. And I thought that was immensely sort of, you know, when it comes to being able to pull things together and demonstrate something. So shouldn't there important. be alternatives to, to a qualification or function papers to demonstrate those sorts of She's in, well now, now you could, I mean, in the past the, the motivation was um, you would publish in a journal. But now that person could just publish online. Can I say two things? Um, so the extrinsic, intrinsic motivation thing is um, definitely something obviously we've Considered, um, and it's not something which is fully resolved. I think I think it's um, 
Well, rather than dichotomy, I think it's more of a spectrum. Um, I think people can do things for a mixture of reasons. So for example, um, the reason I did my doctorate was because I was really interested in digital literacy. I kind of stumbled into my doctorate, for example. Um, but was I eventually interested in you know, being Dr. Belshaw? Yes, I was. So there's a combination of reasons that I think it's quite complex. The other thing, um, so there's three things actually. Um, the second thing is that um, the term badges might be slightly unfortunate in that if they're called anything else, they might seem, people might not have um, inbuilt ideas of, of these kinds of things, you know, or stickers or whatever. Um, but, what was the third thing I was going to say? <laughs> the most important thing I was going to say. Oh, yes. So, um, badges don't have a unit as such. So I think we'll, uh, we'll, we think a lot in terms of um, course credits in universities, like 9 course credits and 60 course credits and all that kind of stuff. Whereas there is no unit of a badge. A badge can be, um, for example, something tiny and small. So um, Mozilla's doing some badges for webmaker things. So literally being able to change one thing in some HTML code could be a badge. But then like a doctoral program could be a badge as well. There is no unit for a badge. It's all about the badge systems design. So the badge basically stands or falls on how good the badge system design is. And that's not something which the Mozilla's control. Andrew, you have a question? Uh, yes, I should pick up that point made there about it being a spectrum and the other intrinsic and intrinsic. It's very intrinsic and extrinsic. Um, I think in some ways we get a virtuous cycle going right here. We've got people who are doing things for intrinsic, they're, they're learning for intrinsic reasons. The blue sense of Wikipedia, for example, we don't currently offer badges. But we don't, mm -hmm. don't, we don't offer badges in a formalized sense. Oh, 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 oh. But <laughs> we have all these people who are doing things for <laughs> presumably mostly intrinsic methods. And the extrinsic things we've not formalized them, they create themselves. And if we have can find a way to do are doing these do money for their own value, for their own benefit, give them something that gives them extrinsic value out of it, then surely that's also good. We're actually giving them benefit from things they're doing already. If people then go and do learning motivated by extrinsic purposes, i.e. getting those badges we've created, then fair enough, they're still doing the learning, they're still doing something. And we can use it to, as a way of advertising the this learning. We can use it to motivate and make people aware that there's this thing we can do that has intrinsic value for them. And Absolutely, in any given cohort. So my, my son went up to school yesterday and he started year one. And so I give him some kind of, I cancel him, give him some advice and these are the kind of things you should do in school, like always smile at people and try your best and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was reading this fascinating article last week and kind of the thing that we all know as parents and educators which is that um, by and large, and this is a bit of a, a crude kind of demarcation, but the middle class kids will perform in such a way so that the teacher knows that they know stuff. Whereas working class kids tend to get told, keep your head down, and don't get into trouble. Yeah? So how do they show what they know? And one of the DML funded kind of competitions is to try and surface some of that stuff that kids from disadvantaged backgrounds know but it's either uncool or they haven't got the kind of advice to be able to surface those kinds of things that they're going to do. They're not always up there saying, look what I can do. Yes. Um, and my comment kind of uh, pings back up a few that, that we've built on things. Uh, I see the badges, um, I think the benefits of badges, or if we're calling it that, to me it's more that um, whenever you look at anything for a personal assessment and they'll start describing their skills, you're automatically then rating that on a scale in your own mind and you know something like a degree you automatically think you know say my background is i might say uh, you know i'm i'm a vet so i've got that side to it um i'm interested in technology and um you know i'm interested in business and marketing but you unless you kind of pr prove where you are on that scale you know something like a degree you think okay right well they're at this level but you know if i haven't gone out and done a prince 2 course I've got no kind of equivalent place necessarily, unless you can talk your way into it um, or prove it. And I guess something like, um, you know, like going off on a gaming idea as well, there's very well established ways to show that you know, one badge is actually better than another. You know, you can progress from a novice to a skilled person in something. Um, I think that's a universally recognised progression from one match to the next, and you do start, then one is more important than the other. Absolutely. So, and I think there's going to be a whole ecosystem of badges. So will there be some really pointless badges like um, Lowy's just on tequila badge? Then that Lowy's just... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Will there be those kind of badges? You know, kind of just fun badges? Absolutely. I mean, why shouldn't there be? Or will there be very serious, important badges? Yes. Okay. There will be. Um, something I haven't mentioned, which people might not be aware of, is the fact that um, there's four different types of people. So there's the, the earner, there's the issuer, um, there's the displayer, but also there's the endorser as well. So if, for example, um, Alan does end up producing badges which are you know, very useful um, and, and are very kind of rigorous and have a, a rubric and all that kind of stuff, and then his university or someone's association or someone else comes along, they can endorse that badge. They can say, actually, Alan's badge is worth endorsing, and then you get the extra kudos, which I think is really valuable. Somebody just wants to back have their hand up for ages. Can I just respond to them? Sorry. Okay. okay. I think you've raised a really serious issue about badges there. I, I've just issued a lorry with a badge, and because it's me, it's basically meaningless, apart from what it's done to Laurie's reputation. Mozilla Foundation is to be applauded in the work that it's done in, in developing not only the badges, but as you explained, the metadata around badges. But every, the, if, if we wind up with this uh, panoply of different organizations issuing these things piecemeal, we devalue the, the whole um, you know, potential of this system. And surely what we need to be doing without over-formalizing it is trying to get people working together in some sort of common framework. Now, as soon as you say common framework, you instantly define what the problem is. But um, you know, while it's just a person issuing a badge, or a company, or a foundation, or even, God forbid, a university issuing a badge, then, then that is the problem. Uh, and unless there is a framework, um, but the, the framework you know, I would suggest so is... How do we get there? How do we get to a framework? Right, so the framework I would suggest is the open badge infrastructure of OBI. So that's the technical part of it, which Mozilla is developing. And that, the whole point of that is that it's an open framework. It's not, uh, it's not presupposing power structures. It's not presupposing pathways. So can people come together? Absolutely. I'm trying to get um, people like um, Joseph Fraser of Leicester to talk to the National College to talk to um, um, Salford University, for example, to get them to think about what different pathways you could have there. The, the, the framework, such that it is, is the, the fact that it's open. You can define whatever you want to do through that. So yes, we do need common frameworks, but can we think of systems where we've got very diverse systems, where um, one qualification means more than another qualification? Well, yeah, I'd call that universities. I'd say that you know, two, one from Sheffield, where I got my degree, might be worth more or less than going to another university. But that's not made explicit, apart from the people who know that system and know that sector. If you go to like the US, I have no idea about university in the US particularly. And all that kind of stuff is just kind of subsumed and implicit. I suppose what the, the value of the um, badge infrastructure is, is that it's, everything is made explicit. You click on it, and it shows you the evidence. It shows you what this person got this stuff yeah, for. Yeah, but you, you would say that, wouldn't you? I mean, what does the Wikimedia Foundation's response to just adopting the Mozilla framework? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> What's the question? I don't understand. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, you, you, you said that Mozilla's put in place a framework, and everyone should adopt it. Well, no, Mozilla, maybe, no maybe right, okay, so, so okay, right, I need to um, kind of make my words more nuanced. Mozilla is developing an open source system which anyone can take and install on their own servers and therefore have a backpack which is completely decentralized and federated, yeah? So Mozilla is interested in developing the technology which you can then take and appropriate. If you want to add extra metadata into your badge, then you can do that because open source software and you can do whatever you want. We're providing the reference kind of stuff. We're developing the central thing, then you can go and do whatever you want. I just want to quote Ali favorably. Uh, you know, that what matters is evidence that learning outcomes have been achieved. It doesn't matter where the learning has happened in the university or the university or Boy Scouts. Um, but different institutions have different standards of evidence. And some have poor reputations and some have. And just like researchers are publishing research in institutions and researchers have written. Thomas John back and then so, so there seems to be two parts of this. It's open learning and open accreditation. This is kind of a bit wider maybe. So basically I love Khan Academy and I like learning maths on it. But I would really love universities to recognise that as an access course for me to go on and do something in the university. The like the problem I have with everything is how you gain the system <laughs> to like so 
if I were to, um, I'd say, link a Facebook account to the Khan Academy and use that as accreditation for a university course, how do you know the person taking the test on Khan Academy is the person who's actually got the account? So, for instance, I can pay someone in Eastern Europe to earn gold for me on Minecraft. Uh, sorry, not Minecraft, World of Warcraft or something like that. Just by giving them my login details. I wonder how you can prove the person who's got the badge actually earned the badge. Yeah, how do you get people to do GCC coursework with me? Um, <laughs> as well, you know what I mean? Like, I know in my, when I was at school, I know that some of the people I've taught haven't done their GCC coursework, but how do you prove that? It's really, really difficult. So it's built into all kind of. I actually had a question for me, but she's just going oh, out. <laughs> Are you well enough to answer it? I'm really hard to answer. We have other wicked elements. Well, um, Doug was saying you don't know anything about America. Well, fortunately, we have Lee here who does and knows about Mexico. And I was thinking that the work that you're doing, I mean, the conversation's quite abstract, but you're dealing with real students learning real accredited material about language, but also the kind of less accredited material about Wikipedia and so on. So I wonder what your view is on badges. I'm not very familiar with the whole notion of badges, to be honest with you. I said my, my experience with assessment is formal university uh, tradition, more traditional. The issue that I deal with is um, how to adapt um, and even change mindsets both with administration and students in order to be able to effectively use tools such as Wikipedia in a classroom. Um, I think the biggest block for using uh, Wikipedia and similar types of things is that the system is not set up um, for um, the kind of experimentation and flexibility that working with something like Wikipedia requires. Um, to put that more simply, um, as I mentioned yesterday, my students are still very much into two plus two, fill a piece of paper, and I get my grade. Um, what that paper is filled with, they don't really care um, because they have been taught <coughs> because of the system that you, um, you, you basically you jump the hoop and you get your little, uh, you get your little uh, your grade. Okay, or badge, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and the uh, the learning really is almost secondary to a large extent because the pur the purpose for these guys is to get their piece of paper so that they can go out and then get a job. Um, and for some of them, they don't even need to do that. I, I uh, my school um, is focused on upper class Mexicans, and many of them have family businesses. A lot of it is just to get the piece of paper so that they can sort of justify their position in society. Um, the, uh, the, but however, on the other hand, um, they sort of realize on another, uh, another level that, well, yeah, that may work fine in my little fish pond, but our little fish pond is connected to other fish ponds. And the way that we do things doesn't always work out, outside. And which is why they hire foreign teachers in the first place. Um, the, the supposed reason is that we were going to bring new ideas and give them some contact with the world, with the wider world. Um, in the states, we're more, um, we're more, but not as well as I would like, um, more interested in doing um, novel work and coming up with new ideas, coming up with. Uh, uh, personal opinions on whatever's being taught, um, but there's still, there's still this notion of jump through the hoops and get my, get my, get my, uh, get my grade and I'm at it. Um, intrinsic motivation obviously is what um, makes students who do well with a Wikipedia type assignment than someone who does not. Problem is you can't make someone have intrinsic motivation. We can only give extra, intr extrinsic motivation, and of course, that uh, kind of defeats the whole purpose. The way that I get around this 
um, is I um, do as much as I can to link Wikipedia with something that the student already is interested in. So for example, one nice thing about being an English teacher, since it's a contentless course, um, they can write about whatever they like. So I make sure, and I go, look, I, you want to write, you want to write about Pokemon? Be my guest, okay? Um, <laughs> should I tell the story? Yeah, I'll tell the story. This is not a, not a Wikipedia story, but it's a, techno, a technology and a language education. Uh, prior to Wikipedia, I had students do online chat to do practice with um, English. And most of them, you know, they would find people on that. They find idiots too, but, um, but they, most of them were able to find people with whom they could connect with and, and talk. And what their, their assessment was um, they had to keep a chart of their time that they were working, just fill it in. Now that can be, that can be gamed, obviously, very easily. And then they're supposed to do a short reflective essay about, about what they talked about, what they learned from it, and things of that nature. Um, and I, that was actually the more important one for me. I had this one student, I'm going through the papers, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Oh boy, okay. I never limited what, they could, what they're supposed to talk about. Ah, and this student found a very interesting, male student had a very interesting, uh, well, basically, basically had about a month's worth of sex chat with someone in Texas. <laughs> and, but he fulfilled the requirements of the course, <laughs> okay? He was using English in an authentic setting for authentic purposes, and the, the uh, reflective essay did reflect what he was doing without getting graphic, um, unfortunately for me. So I graded it like any other, I put it aside, and I handed them all back without any comment. End of the class, the kid comes up to me and says, so miss, did you like my project? Here we go, intrinsic motivation, right? <laughs> I said, you did a nice job on it. And he says, I says, yeah, um, I, I, um, I, I, um, I got tempted and I said, well, are you sure that was a woman you were speaking to? <laughs> He says, oh, of course, miss. I said, okay, fine. No, you did fine. And he says, I saved all the transcripts if you want to read them. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's a teachable moment. That is a teachable <laughs> moment. So but the point of the matter is, um, and that's sort of an extreme example. Right, it's all been, it's all been videotaped. So. Um, <laughs> but the idea is that if you can connect Wikipedia, which is very easy to do, with something that they find that is necessary for them, whether we consider it necessary for them or not, doesn't really matter. Um, then we can sneak in all the stuff that we know is important. Um, the problem with teaching uh, younger people, I, uh, university and below, is that they don't really know what they want and need. And so they actually, uh, and they actually look to us for that. But on the other hand, uh, you have to play this balancing act in between, okay, I know what's good for you, but then you know what's good for you, and then if I tell you too much what's good for you, you're just gonna tune out. And if I give you too much freedom, you're not gonna learn anything anyway. There was a, uh, a case in the States, as a matter of fact. Any of you have heard the Blue Man Group? Yeah. Okay, one of the founders of the Blue Man Group, um, he set up some kind of school where they basically get this idea, I think it was um, the students would decide what they were going to do, when they were going to do it, and how long they were going to do it. And they just let them go with the notion of that, well, students will find what they need to work on. It was a disaster. All right? uh, the, the, the school lasted maybe three, four months before parents started take, take, pulling their kids out of it, even though it was free because it was an experiment. Why? Because no one was telling kids to do it. The kids weren't doing anything all day. Uh, so assessment, unfortunately, is a damned if you do, a damned if you don't uh, situation. Um, that's it. OK. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. No, OK. There's, there's more people in there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Up, just... OK. Uh, I think I kind of wasn't sure about that. But actually, I found this session really helpful. The thing, the essence of the bad system is the quality of the people who are part of the what sort of metadata they make available 
and if organisations in your organisation. I think it's an opportunity to, on the one hand, you have a superficial level, and in that sense, it's a bit like the way academia is regarded, which it is. But you follow the reference. You, you, and, and this is a proposal to set up a system where you can follow that metadata. And some of the badges are going to be like, okay, what does that mean? But other organisations which, which put more care into it have the opportunity to say, actually, when you give this, this piece of accreditation, it actually means this and this and this. So really, I, I, I see it as actually a kind of facilitation tool. You know? okay. So Amber mentioned Stack Overflow in her keynote before. Um, Stack Overflow is a website which um, she alluded to. Um, people can um, ask questions about technical stuff, get answers, um, but also there's a whole community around that. Now they've had badges for, for years, not open badges, but badges where you can get a badge. There's a whole list of them like for being um, nice to people basically and um, for you know lots of different types of facilitated badges. Now they've added a jobs kind of layer on top of there so that um, employers can go in and see the people who have got the badges like expert in Python, you know, uh, and Ruby on Rails or whatever it's going to be and also helpful people and they can go looking for those type of people to employ them which kind of flips around the dynamic. A few years ago, I read an article which basically said, wouldn't it be nice if instead of having to apply to 10 different places in 10 different forms, I could press a button on a profile saying I'm looking for work and people would come looking for me because of the skills that I've got. And you can kind of do that with that kind of system. I, was, I, I wanted to make a point a bit, a bit similar to that, actually. Um, <coughs> that the, the discussions around the limitations of the accreditation in institutions is one thing and that's obviously very heated at the moment because of the situation with education in many western countries is that funding is very problematic but um, I wanted to, to actually make the point that Doug made about where some of the roots of this badges stuff is from and, and it's not from formal education so I can see that there's the, the thing about um, employer recognition and achievement that's, that's complicated <laughs> there's the thing about university recognition and achievement and there, there, there's a, an acronym in the UK of April, accreditation prior experiential learning. So, you know, there are people thinking about this stuff. Um, but I, I just wanted to make a point that there's lots of sorts of achievements that aren't learning objectives, to go back to Ali's uh, point. And it would be a mistake to think that education with a capital E owns learning. There's loads of different sorts of learning that people do. And these badges, like, like Doug mentioned there, some of them have been used in these sort of very community-based, like open source communities. And, you know, about guides and scouts. And I, when I was growing up, I went to the Woodcraft Folk, which was like a liberal version of the guides and scouts, where you could get badges, but it was about um, your personal best and about trying, and it wasn't competitive. But it was about recognising your effort. Um, and we, we ran something called... Um, uh, Dev AD, which is a developers event, and so it's, it's building on the sort of the open source uh, kind of model of community development. And they have been recognising. It's happened quite organically. Is that people want to recognise the people who are good mentors, the people who are good teachers, the people who have got a project going, and, and who actually really value people how to work on a project. All those things are achievements too. Um, and so there's actually been a grassroots demand from that developers community. Can you, can you give me something that shows, because I've gone back to my office and I've said it went really well and I contributed loads and I'm really pleased with it. Can you give me something that shows that? Um, and people want to also reward other people with the mental badge. Um, so it's not all about learning and learning isn't all about education. Well, we've not had a profession at the moment. In the Wikipedia movement, we've got lots of self-study and so we, they like organising the work we do, that much work we need to have retired people. We have, uh, so people way past formal education, or people like me, I've got a PhD, I'm not interested in more formal education exams, uh, writing their own thesis. Uh, we have teenage, teenagers, don't they're too young for, uh, to read all the stuff, but they're doing stuff that students away in university can't do, actually practically helping us with running this organisation and coping with the global nature of it, the charitable nature of it, working with different people. Uh, so, 
the people demonstrating collaboration, mentorship, uh, documentation. So is your answer, and, and that's useful to be able to, it'd be great to, to show that there's a record of what that person's done, even before they've got to university, maybe they're working with a, a multinational um, community. Uh, you're saying holistic, but to get a degree of, of published papers, or something, no. no fine detail in that, in your initial remarks. In my initial, but I'm, what I'm, my, my whole thing is the preservation of formal education as it is now. I don't want to sort of start diluting formal education because it's got a purpose, it's got a place, and it, it's it's good. And you know, I, I honestly believe we have a good education system with flaws. What I don't want to see is, and what I have seen with with proposals that I've had to mark uh, that have come into me, are academics coming and saying. Well, I teach this module and I want to put a badge system in place. I don't want that because I don't think that that's helping assessment and I don't think that it's good. Outside of formal education, I think badges have got a really interesting role. Um, I actually think that the assessment thing is irrelevant and actually Amber's point about demonstrating going back to the institution, I don't think that's as